What's up? What's up? What's up? Welcome into the Jamie D Show. Yeah. I know y'all hear that round of applause. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. We are live on KSHP AM 1400 and 107.1 FM every Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. until 11 a.m. PST. I'm also live on YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, and Facebook at The Jamie D Show. That's T-H-E-J-A-I-M-E-D-E-E-S-H-O-W. What's up, everybody? What's up? I'm happy to have you all here. Today is Thirsty Thursday. Yeah, I finally got <laughs> my day straight. <laughs> I'm still super, super tired from celebrating the VGK Ooh, Stanley Cup win, but we're going we gonna to get to sleep together one day, one day. <laughs> All right, for today's show rundown, I have the news headlines of the day. Then we're also going to talk about Sukiana, who, who is a rapper, and she was sexually assaulted. And if it's okay to sexually assault somebody based off of what they wear or how they rap or what they say or, how, or, or, or their beliefs, and we also have Jarius Morris, the founder and owner of Supplement, a black-owned, insulated, reusable water bottle brand, joining us live later in the show. So make sure you tune in because we have a lot of great things to cover today. And as always, I want you all to interact with me by calling in at 702-221-7283. Again, the number to call in to interact with me is 702-221-7283 as well. If you're in the office and you can't call in, you can always join YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, or Facebook at The Jamie D Show. All right, let's get into the news headlines of the day. So Netflix is reportedly opening up its first ever pop-up restaurant in Los Angeles, and this was reported by Hollywood Unlocked. Well, that's cool because, I mean, who doesn't love Netflix and chilling and having a good time? Well, I guess this way you can Netflix and chill and not be in your house and probably remove the sexualness that comes behind Netflix and chilling. <laughs> Well, y'all know what it means to Netflix and chill after 10 o'clock. <laughs> Nine women, including former model Janice Dickinson, are suing Bill Cosby for sexual assault. Jeez, Bill Cosby is not getting a break. They are coming for this man. I, I know a lot of people out there are like, oh, well, when one person steps up, there's other people who are stepping up and they're liars. I don't know, y'all. There's a lot of people stepping up and they can't all be lying. I mean... You never know. Some people could be liars, but they can't all be liars. There's some truth behind it somewhere. So y'all need to stop victim blaming and pay attention because y'all love giving celebrities way more credibility and way more praise than y'all should. Hey, an autopsy report reveals former 3-6 Mafia gangsta boo's cause of death as an accidental overdose on fentanyl, cocaine, and alcohol as reported by the Neighborhood Talk. Ooh. Oh, we're seeing so many celebrities pass away due to heavy drug use or accidental effects of drug use. And it's sad. It's sad. A lot of times these rappers are actually rapping about things they're doing and telling on themselves. And may she rest in peace, but y'all need to put the drugs down. I understand that we all have vices, but I don't know. I don't know why people don't think alcohol and weed is enough. <laughs> I personally don't smoke because I'm allergic and I can't smoke and I can't be around weed smoke for too long. But liquor is enough for me. Sometimes liquor be dragging y'all too and y'all be acting out just drunk. So the fact that y'all be smoking, drinking, doing drugs heavy. <sighs> and I don't want to judge anybody because I'm I'm all loving and supporting. But do what you need to do to live your life and be great. But just be responsible and do your best not hurt yourself or other people because these drugs are killing y'all and they are addictive. So please, 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 one, know what you're doing. Know where you're getting your drugs from. And I'm not condoning this. But also be responsible. Be responsible and say no to drugs. It's okay to say no to drugs. Seriously. Hey, six people are indicted after a manager of Harvard Medical School's morgue allegedly stole and sold human remains on the black market, as reported by the Neighborhood Talk. What? What? That's insane. What? That's insane. I, we, we hear often that the black market is real. 
And I think a lot of things that we see in movies, a lot of things we see in the media in general is actually real. I mean, you know, they've been talking about aliens for a while and all of a sudden they actually are real. But they weren't real before. They talked about the black market several times and, and showed it in movies and documentaries. And now we're hearing more and more how things are happening in the black market and on the black web. This stuff is scary. Life is scary. Hey, welcome into all of my viewers and commenters on YouTube Live. Hey, I see you, Mercy and Kaylin James. I appreciate y'all for being here. We're definitely going to get into that Sukiyana topic in the next segment. So stick around and hang on. All right. We're going over the daily news headlines. So I don't know if you guys heard, but it was breaking news yesterday that John Morant is actually suspended for the entire 2023 and 2024 season. Ooh, ooh, Ja. Oh, man, y'all got to start making better decisions. I, personally, I don't I, y'all might drag me for this. I don't see any harm of him having a gun. So many Americans who have guns and they wave it around and show it off and take pictures with it. You should not be reckless and waving it around in the sky and shooting it off. You should definitely not do that. I do not condone that. But showing a gun in a video or in a picture when we live in a society where majority of the people have guns, and there's more guns in society than there are humans. I don't think that's such a huge deal. But what I do understand is a huge deal is that you're a part of a company that has a culture that you signed into that says you are not allowed to do certain things. So you should not be doing those things knowing you are a part of a company and an industry that frowns upon those actions. I understand a lot of people try to get into the industry and, and change it from the inside out, but you got to get you got to get your standing and your grounding first. You, you can't just come in there and just try to Shake up the room and shake the table because they're gonna shake you right back. <laughs> All right, Shaq has been seen in the Shaq has been seen in the news for sliding in women's DMs lately. Even after it was reported that he is allegedly dating Brittany Renner, who, if you don't know who she is, she is known for dating a lot of celebrities and being free. If you know what I mean, there's if you're not watching the YouTube, I put air quotes around free. That was my politically correct way of saying the H word. <laughs> he hit up this girl who went viral for saying she gets told she's too pretty to be working at home depot shaq then dm'd her and told her hey don't let these people bother you don't read the comments stuff like that would drive you crazy and have a great day tell all your boyfriends i said hello this this woman is beautiful and mm, hey i mean i don't think you're too beautiful or too smart or too kind or too anything to work anywhere get it how you live we live in 2023 where everything's expensive af it is so hard to survive in our current climate and rent is high do what you need to do, whether it's part-time, full-time, freelance, contractor work, starting your own business. Do what you need to do and don't be ashamed. And, hey, Shag, if you're dating Brittany Renner, I mean, nothing's wrong with dating whoever you want to date, live how you want to live, even though society, I'm not saying I'm calling her the H word. That's why I use the word free. But society is. And so if you look at history, you know, Brittany Renner is, is, is known for getting celebrities and getting sports players and getting what she needs out of them so hey if Shaq wants to date her do it but we all know Shaq if you're seen dating somebody you can't be sliding in women's dms and you sliding in a normal person's dm would definitely shock the news and he also slid in a new orleans rapper's dms who goes by the name of treaty because she posted a new song and he says treaty that song go hard baby keep going that ish keep 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 that ish going he had a typo in his message uh, Shaq seems like a super nice guy. So, I mean, it is what it is, I guess. But I do wonder why people like to share their private DMs and let people know why they are sharing their DMs versus just either sharing it and leaving it at that and not trying to explain it to anybody or keeping it private. I, I don't know. I feel like a lot of people would get more out of life if they keep the, a lot of different things private. I said this in my other episode last week. Everything is content, yeah, but everything does not need to be content. Some of y'all need to keep some things private because, listen, y'all are messing up the bag. I know if a certain celebrity hit me up in the DMs, y'all are not going to hear nothing from me, from them. <laughs> nothing. So in Las Vegas news, Governor Lombardo signs Rex laws bringing tougher sentences for reckless driving, as reported by KTNV Las Vegas. Well, hey, we are in a city where people are drunk driving every day. The city's open 24 hours, and it's hard to maintain a good police force when there's so many different people here from all over the world who are just all around, all over the city. And we do have locals who are doing the exact same thing, getting drunk or high or whatever they're doing and driving. And I mean, I don't, I don't blame Governor Lombardo for signing the Rex laws because 
we, we want to make sure, and it, by the way, this is dedicated to 13-year-old Rex Patchett, who was killed by a reckless driver. The driver was traveling more than 90 miles per hour outside of Jack and Terry Mannion Middle School, March 7, 2022. So I, I understand why they want to enact this law, because under the new, the new leg legislation, offenders will be sentenced under the new legislation, offenders will be sentenced to one to six years in prison for going less than 50 miles per hour over the speed limit and one to 10 years for offenders going over 50 miles above the speed limit. The penalties also extend to those caught speeding in school zones or pedestrian safety zones. And this bill was passed unanimously in a Nevada city April 21st, and it passed with 21 yeses and zero noes. So as the bill was going through the Nevada legislator, Jason Patrick gave emotional testimonies to lawmakers. And you know what? In early April, Jason said, we got to make this happen. So, I mean, I, my condolences to the family and to and rest in peace to the, the innocent 13 year old. But, yeah, we got to make sure that we crack down on drunk driving. And we have to be more responsible as adults. Also, in other Las Vegas news, the Vegas Golden Knights Stanley Cup Championship Parade is happening this Saturday on the Las Vegas Strip. And it will start at 7 p.m on Las Vegas Boulevard and Flamingo Road, which, hey, is pretty good for those who want to stay out of the Vegas heat because it'll be a little bit cooler around 7 o'clock, and then it'll get darker within the day. So it'll be cool. You should try it out. Make sure y'all are safe. Like I told y'all yesterday on my show, my live morning radio show, stop ruining it for people. Go out there, have a good time, be respectful, leave your guns and your, your knives and your, your everything else at home. Don't attack nobody. Don't be reckless. Leave it where y'all at. Don't take it to this parade and ruin it for other, other people. Because when y'all start shooting, people start stampeding. People start getting trampled. People die. Have some decency. Have some cool. Let people enjoy this first ever Stanley Cup win from Las Vegas' very own Vegas Golden Knights. All right. This is the Jamie D Show live on KSHP AM 1400 and 107.1 FM. In the next segment, we're going to talk about how Sukiyana was physically and verbally assaulted by two different people. And we're going to talk about, is it okay to touch men and women based off their clothing, way of speech, you know, creative work, and more. So stick around because I want you guys to call in at 702-221-7283 to get your voice heard. Again, at 702-221-7283. Let's talk about this. There's no judgment here. I'm not going to yell at you unless you're yelling at me. <laughs> I want to talk to you guys. I want to know your true opinion. So call in and, hey, keep commenting on the YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, and Facebook live stream at the Jamie D Show. I'll be right back. Stay tuned, okay? Don't go nowhere. Hungry for the best barbecue in Las Vegas? Come out to the infamous barbecue and meat market, John Moles Meats and Roadkill Grill in Las Vegas. John Moles was featured on the Food Network's Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives. Now take home delicious meat selections for your grill, and while you're there, grab a bite of the best barbecue in Las Vegas. With two locations now at Tom and Gowan or on North Decatur, you're sure to find the perfect meats for your next barbecue or party. Find us online at johnmolemeats.com. At AR Heating and Air Conditioning, our main goal is to provide high-quality service without breaking the bank. From maintaining your HVAC units to fixing them when they are down, they are there for you. AR Heating and Air Conditioning offer reasonable prices, reliability, and professional service at a great value. For more information, go to fixmyac.net or call 702-646-4000. Beat the heat and call AR Heating and Air Conditioning today. Welcome to Hash House A Go Go, where we've been serving farm food and crafted cocktails for over two decades. Visit us for the full Hash House experience at any of our five Las Vegas locations. Hash House A Go Go is where old school meets new and gets twisted. We bring people together over good food and fun. Come in for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, and come hungry because our portions are huge. Visit us online to see our entire menu at hashhouseagogo.com. Hash House A Go Go. It's a Midwest thing, and there's nothing else like it. Is your dog suffering from a sensitive stomach? Hi, it's Kelly the Cookie Lady from Mooch's Munchies. Our dogs had super sensitive tummies and I needed to find a low-fat treat that wouldn't give them gas or other issues. Most of the treats on the market were loaded with fillers, chemicals, and chicken fat. Many of them weren't even food. Well, I knew I could do better, so I developed Mooch's Munchies and I'm happy to be able to share them with you. Stop by our store or our website, moochesmunchies.com, and find out why we say that Mooch's Munchies are totally possum. 
Zen World Premium CBD offers full and broad spectrum CBD oil, extracts, and capsules, which are designed to help you feel your best. Their products are sourced from the best organic hemp and natural ingredients on the market and are tested for quality, purity, and potency. They have a full range of items from health and wellness to beauty to pets. Call 725-205-9223. Visit online at zinworld.com or stop by their location at 9895 South Maryland Parkway and Silverado Ranch Parkway. Mention KSHP for 10% off in-store or use code KSHP online for 15% off. Hungry for the best barbecue in Las Vegas? Come out to the infamous barbecue and meat market, John Moles Meats and Roadkill Grill in Las Vegas. John Moles was featured on the Food Network's Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives. Now take home delicious meat selections for your grill, and while you're there, grab a bite of the best barbecue in Las Vegas. With two locations now at Tom and Gowan or on North Decatur, you're sure to find the perfect meats for your next barbecue or party. Find us online at johnmolemeats.com. Yeah, welcome back to the Jamie D show. What's up, everybody? Y'all hear those claps? Oh, yeah, get those claps in because y'all clapping for me, Jamie D. Yes, we're live on KSHP AM 1400 and 107.1 FM every Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. into 11 a.m. PST. Ooh, we got a very touchy topic to have a conversation about. Let's get straight into it. So, if you all don't know who Sukiana is, I'm going to let you know now because Sukiana is in the news heavy for being physically and verbally sexually assaulted. And the story is pretty intense, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I think sexual assault is pretty intense. And the way she's been sexually assaulted by different men is crazy. Now, let me tell you who she is. She is a female rapper from Florida who is known for extremely raunchy, vulgar, and overly sexual music, her sexual way of speech, and her sexual antics. As well, she has posted porn before with her and her then-boyfriend, I believe. Now, why am I giving you that information? Because I want you to hold on to that, and I want you to give me your thoughts on what I'm about to say. Again, you can call in at 702-221-7283 to be involved in this conversation. Yes, talk to me, man, woman, whoever you are, because I want to know, all right? Now, this is how she sells her craft, being overly sexual. Well, she was seen at a basketball tournament and was on a panel with other celebrities and influencers. Well, one rapper who was there by the name of YK or Cyrus attempted to kiss her in the mouth without her consent in front of everybody. If you haven't seen this video, go to The Shade Room, go to Neighborhood Talk, go to Hollywood Unlocked. These are all different entertainment blogs. And he grabs her by the face and tries to kiss her in the mouth. And she's visibly like, oh, no, stop, please. Mm, oh, and none of the other men who are sitting right next to her are doing anything about it. None of them. And then he walks away and he's like, oh, ha ha, try to clap it up with another guy. Ha <laughs> ha, it was funny. I kissed Sukiana. Now, Sukiana is a pretty woman. She got surgery. She, her surgery looks good on her. She got a, a big behind and nice curves and great lips and awesome skin. And she keeps herself well put together. But she's seen as a sexual object because of her craft, because of how she sells herself. However, remember, she sells herself this way to make money. Now, I want to ask you all, well, actually, before I go into that, due to this incident, there was a clip brought up by the Real Housewives of Atlanta star, Candy Burris, and on her show, she was with DJ A1, and DJ A1 and Candy had Sukiana on their show. Now, their show is called Candy Coded Live, and Sukiana was on their show, and they were talking about a bunch of different topics, and DJ A1 just all of a sudden says, you know, I know that that lady part squirts and i know it's it's wet and i know it does it has all these features and i know it's good i want to try it i want to taste it i want to do all these things saying a bunch of vulgar things to her and she is visibly uncomfortable she even took a step back and was like Ugh. It, it was obvious obvious that she was not enjoying these advances and he just kept going even though she didn't say anything in the moment she made the face that she was very uncomfortable. Now, this brings up, oh, before I get, that, get into that, and Candy didn't say anything either. So 
Gandhi didn't say anything, and those other celebrities in that other situation didn't say anything. This brings up the topic now of when is it okay to approach and interact with the person in a sexual way just because of who they are, how they dress, or the things they say? Call in at 702-221-7283. Again, the number to call in is 702-221-7283. I want to know your thoughts because my opinion is this is absolutely wrong and foul on every angle. Just because you dress a certain way, have a certain lifestyle, or say certain things doesn't give you the right to touch an individual. Doesn't give you the right to assume that an individual will appreciate your advances. You don't just get to interact with or treat somebody a certain way just because of how they look, just because of their body features, just because of what they said in the past, just because of a certain story they're telling you. You still need consent. And just because you may have heard this individual gave that consent to everybody else does not mean that you're automatically entitled to that person's consent. You have to have these conversations with these individual. You have to make sure that it's okay. You have to actually take a step back and realize you are a predator right now. You look like a creep. And a lot of times people don't care. I, listen, I'm going to talk to you all about myself. I have had several different people, men and women, catcall me because of the certain clothes I wear. Now, I don't wear nothing skimpy or crazy, but I do wear like two-piece outfits. So if you guys are looking at the YouTube stream right now at the Jamie D Show, I have a matching short set to my current shirt and it fits me well however that doesn't mean just because the bottom part of my body is thicker than the most and it may attract you that you're able to cat call me say vulgar things touch my butt without my consent grab me inappropriately without even introducing yourself to me and more and i have been in situations where i i'm a very outspoken person and i didn't say anything at first because i was like Whoa, that was uncomfortable. I was not expecting this. Like I said, I've had men and women do this. And then after a while, I'm like, oh, no, I'm going to start stepping up for myself. I never have a problem stepping up for myself. But a lot of times when things happen to you out of nowhere, you're very surprised that, that this happened to you. Now, I started reacting in a way where it was like, hey, don't do that. Don't touch me. I don't know you. Who are you? Or I would grab them back and be like, do you like this? Do you like the way I'm touching you? Do you, do you know me? And Oftentimes, people will get offended that I'm sticking up for myself. Oftentimes, people would tell me I need to calm down or I need to relax or it's not that serious. And in my head, it bothers me so much that you think just because the body type I have, you can touch me or interact with me in any type of way. Now, somebody on YouTube said the porn she made was with the father of her children she always says she's really like that with her partner, but in their privacy. And that's a great point. Just because you see me acting a certain way with somebody else, just because you've seen, and I don't do porn, but just because you may have seen somebody's porn with somebody else, doesn't mean that you're able to touch them, vulgarly express yourself to them, cross their boundaries. Just because they're that way with somebody else doesn't mean they're going to be that way with you. And oftentimes people are like that in the privacy of their own space. Oftentimes, these celebrities, even though, like I said earlier, sometimes celebrities do rap about things they're actually doing in their life, there's also a lot of other celebrities and people who are just doing and saying certain things for clout, for exposure, for money, and don't have any doings in what they're saying. So no, it is not cool to just touch somebody and verbally sexually assault somebody to me these men are gross for that now yk osiris did apologize he did go to his social media and let sukiana know that you know he's sorry and, and to me uh, I, i'm glad that he stepped up but a lot of times i wonder with these celebrities or people in power even say anything if they weren't famous and had a publicist with them and we're being dragged on social media because who, who, who how do we know that that apology is real i don't know if you guys have seen sukiana's response to all of this but she stated on her twitter that she's hurt and scared to stand up for herself 
That makes me sad. That's horrible because I've been in spaces where I was a little afraid to stand up for myself because I've I've had even big men, bigger than me, and I'm 6'3 and pretty, pretty muscular, grab me in a way, and I'm like, oh, if I respond, am I gonna look like the bad guy? Am I gonna get attacked? And I've even had women who get offended when I say, hey, don't touch me like that. Like, I don't know you. It, it, it Just because I look a certain way does not give you the right to do anything. Now, Waiko Osiris' apology stated, I want to publicly offer my sincerest apology to Sukiana. And as, in an attempt to be playful, I misread the moment and violated Sukiana's boundaries. I understand the importance of consent and I'm embarrassed by my, by my behavior. I take full responsibility and I've made multiple attempts to apologize. I have the utmost admiration for Sukiana and it was never my intention to disrespect her. <sighs> That's such a PR response. And it was a, it was a well tailored one. But you're, you're telling me why Chaos Cyrus, that was an attempt to be playful? To put your mouth on somebody else's mouth. <laughs> mm. To put your mouth on somebody else's mouth is playful. Somebody that you, that you don't even have that rapport with. And that's a lot of people's problem. You aren't even creating a rapport with somebody, a relationship with somebody before enacting in your actions. You, you guys aren't even trying to make sure it's okay that people want that type of attention. Ah. <sighs> I really want y'all to do better because, you know, us men, we already get a bad rap, especially black men, for being aggressive and, and, and doing too much. And we have to really pay attention to how we're interacting with our women because we got to protect our black women. We do. We do. And like I tell everybody, I'm, I'm for everybody. I'm for all demographics. But I'm talking to my people in this very exact moment. We got to remember, we got to protect each other. We're already up against a bunch of other people. Remember that we are still humans okay all right well that's it for this segment because i want to get into the next segment with jarius morris who is a founder and owner of supplement a black owned insulated and reusable water bottle brand this man is going to come in here and drop some knowledge and tell you about his brand and do a lot of great fun things i'm super excited to have this man on because dude this is great hey we're gonna take a quick break you're live on KSHP AM 1400 and 107.1 FM. Stick around because Jarius is going to really get into this brand and more. You want to stick around. And if you have any questions, call in at 702-221-7283. I want to leave off with this before we go into the break, though. He is an African-American man. And this is a Black-owned business. We got to support each other. All right, we'll be right back, okay? Stay tuned. At AR Heating and Air Conditioning, our main goal is to provide high-quality service without breaking the bank. From maintaining your HVAC units to fixing them when they are down, they are there for you. AR Heating and Air Conditioning offer reasonable prices, reliability, and professional service at a great value. For more information, go to fixmyac.net or call 702-646-4000. Beat the heat and call AR Heating and Air Conditioning today. Welcome to Hash House A Go-Go, -Go, where we've been serving farm food and crafted cocktails for over two decades. Visit us for the full Hash House experience at any of our five Las Vegas locations. Hash House A Go-Go -Go is where old school meets new and gets twisted. We bring people together over good food and fun. Come in for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, and come hungry because our portions are huge. Visit us online to see our entire menu at hashhouseagogo.com. Hash House A Go-Go. -Go. It's a Midwest thing, and there's nothing else like it. Is your dog suffering from a sense? What's poppin'? Welcome back to the Jamie D Show. Yeah, I know you hear those claps, that round of applause. I told you we would take a quick break because I want to get into this segment with the amazing Jarius Morris. Because look, this guy has a brand, a black-owned business. Y'all, Jarius Morris, he is the founder, he is the creator and owner of Supplement, a black-owned, insulated, reusable water bottle brand. And he's joining me live right now. Jarius, what's up, man? How are you? What's going on, man? Definitely appreciate that intro. A lot of I energy. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling yes, it. Yes, welcome in. How are you doing today? Good, good. Getting prepared for this weekend with the Juneteenth stuff we got going on. 
Facts. It is Juneteenth this weekend. What you got coming up? Uh, we're we're at Black on a Block. We're vending over there, selling uh some Juneteenth, uh, custom Juneteenth bottles that we work with a couple artists to do. Okay, so you're gonna be in Los Angeles this weekend. This weekend. Yep. Yes, sir. Okay. So so you're in Los Angeles this weekend to sell and promote your brand, correct? Exactly. Yep. All right. Well, let's get it straight into it. What is Supplement? Tell us about it, man. Cool, cool. Yeah, so Supplement is the first Black-owned insulated water bottle brand. Uh, it's geared toward the Black and Brown community, the urban culture as a whole. Um, you know, we, we were started, uh, you know, because pretty much growing up, I, I didn't have any uh, knowledge about drinking water or, you know, staying hydrated. Um, just I think the black community in, in general, just like growing up, nobody really tells you to drink water, stay hydrated. Thanks. And, um, you know, when I when, you know, to, to kind of piggyback off of that, I wanted to start a brand that was kind of geared toward the culture um, mm -hmm. in a way that 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 our, our people could resonate with. And um, I stumbled across the insulated water bottle industry. And when I did, I realized that none of those brands like marketed to, to the black and brown community like like at all. So, um, um, you know, I kind of discovered them by mistake, actually. I, I discovered like okay. insulated water bottles by mistake. It was just like this huge, massive industry. And I haven't mm -hmm. heard about it until I was like in my 30s. And I'm just like, oh, wow. yeah, so something has to change. So, um, you know, I created a, a insulated water bottle um, and I wanted it to be something that actually like felt and looked like uh, my culture. OK, that, that that makes sense. I That's cool. I'm glad that you're able to see that there's a need in our community and do something about it. I want you to dive a little deeper though, because you said when you were younger, there wasn't much education on hydration and drinking water and feeling your body. And you said that you wanted to do something about it. What made you actually want to do something about it? And why is it that this is an important topic for you? Right, and well you actually, yeah. So it, it was an extremely important topic for me because I was having my own internal health issues um, you know, like I, I had a, a situation where like my kidneys weren't functioning properly, um, you know, like potentially having like high blood pressure, cholesterol, all, all the different things that plague the black and brown community. And then um, I had went to see like a holistic doctor and they were telling me pretty much that I was dehydrated. Like, like, you mm -hmm. know, your, your kidneys aren't functioning because you're not drinking enough water or you're not getting the minerals and stuff like that that you need. So that made me be a lot more aware. And I was like, man, I really don't drink that much water. I might have like a cup right. a day, maybe, <laughs> you know what I mean? But I'm like, I really don't drink water. And I was just like, and I would talk to different friends and different people that I that I hang out with, go to their house. I'm like looking, checking, seeing if they, they drink water. I'm like, yo, as a culture, like water is not on the forefront of our minds. Like, it's not. All. It's not. <laughs> it's, it's not. You know what I mean? So yeah. um, I wanted to use the platform when I, when I discover insulated water bottles. And I saw that like those those brands were pretty much environmentally focused. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's either like save the oceans, like, you know, no more plastic or they wanted to create the, the most indestructible bottle for like, you know, being out in the woods and bears and stuff like that trying to attack right. you. So it's stuff that that, you know, we wouldn't be in the woods with no bears. So I, I was just like, you know, I was like, <laughs> Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Jairus, who is we? <laughs> <laughs> the urban culture. We Facts. will be in the woods. You know what I mean? So I was just like, you know, I didn't resonate with that. And I was like, that's why I never heard of these brands until I got into this, this industry is because they weren't marketing to me. Mm -hmm. So when I created this brand, I wanted it to be geared more toward the culture, more towards the people. Um, and instead of, instead of our mission being like to save the oceans, uh, our mission is to, is to, you know, educate the urban community on, on the importance of hydration. So mm -hmm. we're giving you the dope sleek bottle. That's going to keep yourself cold for 24 hours, hot for 12, but it's also an underlying message in there. Like, yo, if you got this bottle, it, it means that you you've seen our website, you've seen our Instagram and, it, and you're, you know, subconsciously being driven to like, I got to drink more water. Like this is this is That's a tool, a vessel for you to to look at and use to be a reminder that, you you, you know, you need to go drink some water. Facts. Hey, I love to hear it. I'm, I'm proud of you, man. Congrats. This is awesome. Listen, you're just now meeting me. But one thing my friends and family knows about me is that I drink a lot of water. People nice. love making fun of me because I be, I drink water like nobody's business. And <laughs> I love I love water bottles. Literally, I, I collect water bottles. And I, I want you to comment on why do you think your brand is important? You know, you're on a live morning radio show. Mm -hmm. and people are always looking for celebrities and are always looking for their products. But right. you are an up and coming African-American man who has a black owned business and is pushing for hydration in our community, explain to the people why your brand is actually important for them to talk about and listen to and buy. For sure, for sure. So the brand is highly important. Of course, 
we all know this black owned and uh but i think the most important thing is is the mission behind the brand mm -hmm. um you know the pandemic has showed us alone that the that the black and brown community was the most affected because of our health and um i think a brand like this is is pushing it's like I think drinking water is like the the start of the tip of the iceberg of yep. one of the things that everybody could change about their daily habits, their daily self to get to have an overall healthier lifestyle. So pushing pushing supplement not only you know helps us grow to do more things within communities like set up hydration stations, you know, show up to these different events, giving out education on the importance of hydration, as well as collabing with different other nutritional brands that that are able to like you know shed light on the food deserts that we mm -hmm. have in our urban communities. Um, you know, so I just think supplement is like the tip of the iceberg to kind of start an overall trend. Because uh, I like to say that, you know, people say that a lot of these these uh, issues that run in and uh, people try to say like running your family, like, oh, high blood pressure, high cholesterol are running our families. But in all reality, it's really just those habits that we've learned from the generations before us. So if I can get the like this current generation to, to be more conscious than their parents were, it's about drinking water, staying healthy and hydrated then I'm, uh, you know, ultimately kind of changing the future almost like so the black hey. and brown community, instead of, uh, you know, like saying that this runs in my family, it's like, oh, no, actually, my dad was kind of healthy. And uh, he told me to drink nice. water since I was like five or six years old. So like, I'm actually healthier than what my grandparents were that died at 55 off diabetes. Mm. So I just think that like, you know, uh, promoting and pushing the brand supplement and just helping uh, you know, get that tip of the iceberg on the black and brown community being overall a healthier community. Jarius, this is great. I'm loving this product and I love the the message behind it as well because we need this in our community. I listen, I tell people all the time, y'all need to put that weed and that liquid down and get some water. Not saying y'all shouldn't water. do it. Do what you want to do, but drink some water. Make sure to put some water in your bodies because a lot of these vices we have in our community are affecting us. And a lot of times it can be reversed and fixed by drinking water and working mm -hmm. out. Jarius, tell us how your product is different than other products. Yeah, so um, I kind of touched on it a little bit earlier. So like a lot of the other uh, insulated water bottle brands, like I said, they're they're gearing their products toward environment. It's not really toward the people. It's more so, um, you know, save the oceans. And, and, and these things, we actually fall in that category by default because it's a reusable water bottle. Mm -hmm. But when you look at our marketing and you look at who we're targeting and, and the message that we're trying to push, we're not we're not necessarily targeting the environment. We're targeting the people. So like our mission is to create a be overall better community. So um, our product also is, you know, geared toward urban culture from the design. Like like the whole design of the bottle is all about uh, it's all about the street. So like we have the uh, you know, we, we design a bottle because, you know, our culture is like an extreme sneaker culture. You know, we love fashion. We love looking fresh. So we wanted to create something sleek. Um, that's the bottle right there, huh? Yeah. So we wanted to create hey, start something off, sleek. Start off for better. Let me let me get a darker bottle. Let me get a black bottle. So this is actually the Juneteenth bottle that we have coming up, coming out. Oh, so there's a Juneteenth uh, collection. Talk about it. Yeah. So this is the Juneteenth bottle that we have coming with an artist we did and uh we used in um California. Okay. Um, so so this is the I'm trying to see where the camera. Is. So this this is the the top of the bottle. Uh, it's it's our logo. It's the Blocks logo. So it's pretty much. It represents it represents the streets pretty much Period. um bringing bringing the, the the communities and the blocks together all for one important goal which is hydration right. um we have our our supplement uh boot that uh you know it's for like you know you can put it on your granny's counter and it's not going it's like a it's like a built-in coaster but it okay. also represents the bottom of a, a of a shoe like the sole of a shoe mm -hmm. as well as the uh shoestring carrying loop so it's, it's 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 designed so that way you know it's it's a great carry around plus it incorporates sneaker culture, so it matches with your outfits. Um, it adds value to your to your to your outfits and like your everyday life versus like taking away from it. Hey Amen. That is beautiful. That's exactly why I have to ask you: Why is your brand different, or how is it different than other brands? Because you made a statement about how you're pushing it for the people, but look at all these features your bottle has that you're not seeing anywhere else. You're not seeing it in Target. You're not seeing it in Walmart. But you're seeing it here with Jarius, the owner of Supplement. Jarius, tell us how much these bottles usually go for. Yeah, so these bottles are very affordable. Um, the quality is extremely high, but we still wanted to, you know, we didn't want to hit nobody over the head. So the uh, our, our blank colors are actually $28 and our mm -hmm. straw, our sport lid bottles are $34. Okay. Now, where can they go to get these bottles? Um, you can go to www.supplementsuplmnt.com. 
Um, and, uh, you know, all our collections, everything that we do is all on there. Of course, you know, a lot of our limited drops, uh, you only can probably realize that they're, they're there uh, through our social media. Mm-hmm. So social media is the exact same thing as well. S-U-P-L-M-N-T. Follow us. Tap in all the dope stuff that we got going on. Tap in. Hey, so let's take a step back real quick, Jarius. Where are you from? So I'm from Philly. I grew up. Are oh, you from in South Philly? Philly? Yeah, yeah. I grew up in South Philly. And uh, okay. So and then I, I came over to Jersey, uh, like while I was in high school. So I spent most of my my you know my younger years in Philly and most of my adult years in like North Jersey. Okay, so talk to me about why you think it's important to be a brand owner and creative from Philly. Why is that important? Because y'all love. Philly and y'all go hard for it. <laughs> AKA Meek Mill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just think Philly is just like a passionate city, man. I just think that people, uh, people that come from there, especially depending on what part, I mean, you just learn a lot of grit. It's from, it's from your environment. Like, you know, it's kind of one of those places where, similar to New York or any other city where, you know, you just have to have that grit. You got to have that drive to, to get out of there, you know, yeah. to survive. So, um, yeah, I, I just think that, you know, growing up in the inner city, it teaches you a lot. You either learn from it or you let it consume you. So I decided to just kind of take those, uh, take, take the hardships and just, uh, and like use it as fuel to, uh, you know, it's just to create a better world. That's lit. Jarius, I can relate because I'm from Chicago, Illinois. I actually did grad school at the university of Maryland college park. And I was always in Philly and mm-hmm. in New York. Uh, before we go more into the topic that we're on, I want to take a step back because I got to do this live on air. Jarius, ew. I, I know you're not going to know why I'm saying this, but Jerry, what happened? ew. What happened? <laughs> ew. I heard you a part of them boys. Oh, the noobs. Ew. Ew. I'm going to stop playing. I'm a member of Five Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated. Oh, you know. Man. But yeah, that's good. It's cool to see that you are a part of the culture born and raised because yes, you know, you're an African American man, but you also keep the culture going because For you sure. went to college, obviously, and you're part of the D9, which is the Divine Nine. And that's great. Let me ask you this. How has the support been from your fraternity as it pertains to buying your bottles and supporting your brand? Be honest. Oh, no, it's been fantastic, man. Honestly, th- those are my biggest uh, my biggest supporters in the very beginning, man. A lot mm-hmm. of a lot of stuff that I've gotten, like a, a one deal I probably can't really talk about yet, but like we, I've gotten like a corporate opportunity for retail from nice. one of my frat brothers that was like a buyer there. Um, he like plugged me into the right person to talk to because okay. when, you're, when you're doing this, it's, it's hard to get to get in contact with the right people. You know what I mean? Like, it's like so many gatekeepers that even though your idea could be dope, the bottles could be fire. It's just like, ah, I'll check that email when I get to it. But like when you get an inside person, it just makes it a lot easier. But also just you know helping promote they you know they always sharing my stuff promoting they, my That's first beautiful. followers um yes. they bought they bought bottles they get people to buy bottles they go when they go on travel they take pictures they try to give me some content like build, building it from early on like i could say that definitely my majority like i would say at least my chapter they like they was pushing us pushing heavy that's great and what school you go to i went to king university it's in, uh, okay. it's in north jersey yeah Great. Now let's 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 take a step back some more. You you went to King University. You're, it's in it's in Jersey, and you're part of the Divine Nine Cap Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. You said they they really help push your brand and they support you. What was your degree in? My degree was actually in public administration. <laughs> so so honestly, I, I didn't even know what I wanted to do when I went to college. It was one of those things where just like your parents tell you, uh, you know, like my mom, I'm first generation college, so my mom didn't go. So. She didn't really care what my degree was in. She just was like, right. go to college. You could be better than, than what I was. So mm-hmm. I think I think that a lot of times in urban communities, without the guidance, like we all just go to school just to go without really knowing what we want to do. Now, there's a reason I asked this, because Jarius, yesterday I had a conversation with people around the world about nine to five life versus entrepreneur life. You went to college not really knowing what you want to do, but thinking that you're going to get into the corporate world. And then you started your own business. Talk to us about how, if anything, your degree helps you in your current business. Yeah, so I'll say my degree didn't help me like at all in my business. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. Honestly, thank you. I'm not gonna lie. It did absolutely, uh, absolutely nothing for me. I, when I when I when I got out of school and I, and I started I started working at a Fortune five company uh, called mm-hmm. McKesson. It was like a medical supply company. And when I was there, I started to see like a lot of vendors that would come in, and they they pretty much would. Would, would uh you know pitch their their product that they created and then get us to sell it so 
and, and I was I did really good at the job. And then I started to see I started to ask questions like, yo, so where do y'all get this stuff made? And they're like, oh, I get it made overseas. Bring it over here. I market it. You guys sell it. And I'm just like, bro, if I can do if I can do this for these brands that I have no passion for, I can care less about. Right. I definitely can create something for myself. So I would say I would say most mostly everything I learned was off trial and error, just like being being willing to take the risk and do it. I would I wouldn't give any credit to to the institution that I went to that to like give me any like drive to want to start a business. Cause I feel like college, I feel like college, you discover yourself, you discover stuff that you get at it. It expands your mind, but like undergrad, ah, it's not, you're not really taking away nothing. That's going to like blow your life away. Like, Oh yeah, this degree helped me. (laughs) Like, yeah, no, you spin facts. You spin facts on the show today. For sure. Talk to us about how, when you got your degree and you, you worked for this company, and you started realizing they're doing things that you could do on your own. What made you say water bottles, though? I know you told us a story about being dehydrated yeah. and, and, you know, wanting to help out the communities. But why water bottles? Right. So uh, so so I, so to piggyback that, like I, the, the job was doing layoffs, too. They were just like laying off departments after departments. Mm-hmm. So, so like the truck, the trust to think that like they wasn't going to eventually lay off my department. I just was like, I need to figure something out. So I ended up. Uh, doing a traditional route, selling items on Amazon. I was like an Amazon FBA guy. Okay. And um, they had this uh, website called Jungle Scout. It was like a subscription service that would show you like the top selling items on Amazon. And um, because I was, you know, I was buying stuff and reselling it on there. So mm. I, I looked into the heart. That's why I say I found it by mistake. I was looking in the hardware section of like top selling items. And that's when I discovered this brand that was selling, you know, 40,000 units a month. And I was like, wow, this is huge. And I, I click on it and it was it was Hydro Flask. And I was just like, OK, I never I never heard of this brand. They're selling right. so many. And then I saw then I looked them up. I saw they were in like Dick Sports and Sporting Goods. So I went there and I just saw I'm just like, wow, this is like a massive company. Yet mm-hmm. I've never heard of them. Like, why? Right. So, you know, I, I looked at their marketing and then I realized they just weren't targeting us. So I was just like, wow. So so it's this huge brand. Let me start asking my, my peers, like different people in my community that I know, like, yo, have you ever heard of hydroplastic? They're like, no, nah, never. So I'm like, OK, so I think I got something here. I think that right. I think that the insulated water bottle industry isn't targeting the black and brown community because we're not really seen doing the things that they created it for, which is like being outside in the wilderness. But we are outside. You know what I mean? We do go to cook out. We, we outside. Go to we outside. <laughs> yeah, like we, we are outside. Like we the most outside. So it's yeah, just like the picnic. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, so I was just like, you know what? Let me, let me, let me test this out. So I did the traditional mm-hmm. route. I did, I went on Alibaba. I found a, a, a generic hydroplast insulated water bottle, threw a logo on there. I bought like maybe two, 200 or 300 of them. And I did like a little quick little campaign on Instagram. And then, uh, and this is early Instagram before you could really uh, do too much. And then um, I sold, I sold maybe like a hundred of them in like the first, the first two weeks. And then people were coming at me like, "Yo, like, like, how did you create this?" They thought I created the technology of keeping it cold all day because, like, they would they would wow. go to their car and the ice was still in there the next day. And I'm like, "Nah, I didn't create this this technology. <laughs> <laughs> you right. know, we just weren't marketed to." So that's when I was just like, "Boom! I think I got something. I need to." you know, get off the, the Alibaba. I need to find an industrial designer that could create, create me my own custom joint. And, um, and, you know, and the rest is history from there. So you make a lot of great points. We have a few minutes left. So I want to try to tackle this as quickly as we can. Tell us how we can trust your brand. Like, why uh, are you credible? Why is your brand, yeah. the brand you need to buy? Right. So, of course, we're extremely credible. Mainly one one little thing is that, you know, our bottles are made in like the same factory as Yeti. So so the, so and that's a company that's been around for years, the quality and, and they're probably the top quality bottle out there, even compared to any of the other big ones. But they're, they're definitely one of the biggest whales. Um, so so, you know, our our bottles are made in that same exact factory. So the quality and the standards are just as good. The only difference is that, you know, we're a black owned brand and I'm and I'm just gearing a product more toward people instead of the environment so i love to hear it does your water bottle have leak free seals yes it's uh it's leak free bpa free plastic um all the bells and whistles uh dishwasher safe um you know the rubber boot we it's 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 a it's a bunch of different details within the bottle that that uh that give us like extreme credibility and when you get it because i know everybody's listening is going to go to the website right after this and buy one when you get it 
and you open up the uh the belly band it'll give you all the instructions on how to properly care for your uh, supplement bottle hey that's awesome i actually want to tell you we're live on youtube twitter twitch and facebook at the jamie d show and people have been commenting already uh, the lovely ladies of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated are in the chat. Hey. And one of them said, I just bought two bottles. Oh, let's go. <laughs> yeah. And she that's says, awesome. Look, I'm going to need you to overnight it because I want it before Saturday. <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah, yeah, somebody that's says, I'll be trying to that. match my outfits to the bottle. Somebody else just said, I'm so happy he's on the show. I'm buying one today. Let's so go. people are buying it right now. And that's that leads awesome. me to this new point. I know. I'm Congrats, man. I'm happy for you. See what the power of the Jamie D show. Let's go, Jamie wanna, D. Hey, let's do it. I want to know. How do you believe it benefits you to market only to the African American African American community? And the reason I ask this is because so often we do see that a lot of money is also behind the Caucasian community as well and other demographics. And when they see black owned brands or businesses, they steer away from actually buying it because of that fact. Right. Yeah. So. <clears throat> So just to set the record, like I don't, I wouldn't say I market only to black, black and brown community. I think that we started by marketing to black and brown community because that's who I represent. So I feel as though maybe if you if you resonate with black culture, then the water bottle is for you. And I think, I think a lot of times, uh, you know, we're trendsetters. You know what I mean? So like, like the stuff that we do by default, other uh, ethnicities are gonna want to rock with it because it's cool. Yeah. It's the cool thing to do. So, mm -hmm. so our thing is really building a community around our culture more than just like being black or, or, you know, you know, it's, it's more, it's more around like black culture. Um, you know, like we throw up dance videos. We do, right. I guess it's just so much stuff that if, if you was around a culture, like you're going to resonate with it. If you're not, if you're somebody that just like goes out and you're like a surfer, you listen to whatever, then when you go on our page, you're not going to resonate with it. So yeah, it might not be for you. Then a product might be still dope, but it might not be for you. So I, I would say we're, we're more so building the 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 brand off our culture making it a community feel more so than uh just like saying like only if you black this for, is, is for you because i know some some pretty square black people myself <laughs> that, that, that might not rock with this so it's mm -hmm. you know and i know some real cool asians some real cool white people some real cool latinos right. that's like that that rock my brand like crazy you know what i mean so okay. it's it's more so it's more so a culture thing you know i mean you got to be a part of the culture and understand the culture to really resonate with supplements can you tell us about the artists who you've worked with to design the bottle so far? Yeah, yeah. So we got two are. artists. We got two artists right now. And this guy is this is from Uncut Art. So he he designed this, and these these are dropping on the seventeenth. These are our Juneteenth nice. collab. So protect your art is his like slogan. Um, shit, backwards. And um, he <laughs> uh he created this bottle because it's like a bunch of different sayings on here to like speak life and into mm -hmm. your water and like whatever you're drinking. Um, so, you know, check the, check the, uh, Instagram out. It'll be a lot more cool stuff like that. And then we got, of course, the Apexer bottle. Um, he's a super, another super dope artist out of San Francisco. Uh, this, this is the kind of art that he does. He does like a bunch of murals. He doesn't That's really cool. do, yeah, he, he doesn't really do art. Uh, he doesn't really That's do, lit. um, do like product. Like he doesn't really like sell murals. He just does murals on like buildings and like for businesses and stuff like that. So he so gracefully like love what we were doing. And he decided to, uh, you know, to let us use his art to uh, that people can walk around with, which hey, I think is, is 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 super dope. Like these are limited edition. We only got, we only have like two hundred of these. So once they sold out, it'll never come out again. Same thing. Hey, Jerry, the, somebody just said uh, live on air. I just ordered that one. Love it. Hey, yes, Jerry, oh, tell us quickly what's next yeah. for the brand supplement. Do you have any upcoming collaborations with brands or upcoming events that we should know about? Um, yeah, we got a, a bunch of cool stuff. We're doing a panel. We got a, a Juneteenth bottle launching with the sneaker store Snipes, um, which is super cool. They'll be in a couple different stores. Um, I'm doing a panel with them. Of course, we got Black on a Block in LA. We're going to be out yep. there selling the bottles, going crazy out there. Um, but you know what you're going to see more from us is we got a larger, larger bottles coming. It's, we're pretty much doing anything that relates to, to getting the message out there to get people to drink more water. So whether that's activations, pop-ups, um, we got this thing called can I curse on here? No, no, it's not uh, a radio. <laughs> okay, we got we got a thing called supplement that ish, and okay. it's uh it's, it's where people can show up. Uh, we, we do on pop ups where like we'll pop up at your city. We'll have like mm. fifty bottles of first people that show up. Uh, you can trade in whatever corny other brand bottle you got, and we'll give <laughs> you a supplement one. You know what I mean? Mm. So like we're so we're doing our first one in L.A. on the uh, on the eighteenth at the Runyon Canyon. So mm. if you in L.A., pull up. Uh, you know, pull up with whatever, with your Yeti or whatever other brand you Thanks. got, 
and uh, you know, give that to us, and we're gonna bless you with some fire. Hey, and, uh, that's where we at. Jairus, talk your talk. Will the Jamie D show see any products? Will we be giving away your product live on air at all? For sure. Yeah, Listen. like how you want to do it? Let's do you, it. You got to let me know. Talk to me off air because you got people saying, are you going to do a giveaway live on air? They oh, want to yeah. know if, if Jamie D's going to be seen drinking out of the bottle. You got to talk Jamie to me. Jamie D is definitely getting a bottle for yeah, sure. I'm going to send you a care package. For hey, sure. we'll let it hear. I appreciate that. Y'all heard that live on the Jamie D show. This has been an amazing segment with Jairus Morris the founder and owner of Supplement, a black-owned, insulated, reusable water bottle brand. Before we leave, Jairus, let the people know how they can find you and support you. Yeah, man. Just hit us up on Instagram, at Supplement, S-U-P-L-M-N-T. Hold on, Jairus. can't hear you. Hold on, Jairus. Hold on. Take a step back. Can you hear me? We can hear you now. Tell Bam. us how we can find you and support you. For sure. All you got to do is uh, go to our Instagram, follow us, at Supplement, S-U-P-L-M-N-T, or go to our website, order some bottles. You know, every all your contributions, everything you're doing is helping us do more, come out with more colors, which we do got coming out in the next month. Um, yeah, so yeah, follow us and uh, shout us out, tag us, all that good stuff that helps support. Facts, we got to start popping them supplement bottles. Right hey, I appreciate you again, Jerry. You have a great rest of your day. Definitely. Thank you all so much for tuning into the Jamie D show. This has been an awesome day. Thirsty Thursday. But hey, you won't have to be thirsty anymore if you get the supplement bottle by Jarius Morris. Hey, tune in tomorrow because we have so many more topics to talk about. We have more celebrities, influencers, and amazing people from all walks of life who are going to be joining the Jamie D Show. I'm live every Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. until 11 a.m. PST on KSHP AM 1400 and 107.1 FM. And as always, you can follow my social media handles at the Jamie D Show. That's T H E J A I M E D E E S H O W. You don't want to miss out on the live video stream and what's happening behind the scenes. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace out. What's up, everybody? You were just tuned into the Jamie D Show, live on KSHP AM 1400 and 107.1 FM. If you aren't in the Las Vegas area, you can catch my show live on YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, and Facebook at the Jamie D Show. That's T-H-E-J-A-I-M-E-D-E-E-S-H-O-W. If you want to advertise your business on my show, email us at info at jamied.com. Thank you all so much for your support. See you tomorrow. Thank you.